how we can potentially collaborate into the future. Uh, should I now? Uh, uh, Dr. Wahab, uh, we will uh, uh, pass Bimbrad, uh, our uh, Bimbrad, and then okay, please, then uh, all right, yours, and then Flora. All right, yours. I'll do it, and when I feel any problem, then my country director will take care of it. Okay, okay, thank you. Nasreen, go ahead. Sir, screen share options. Nasreen, screen share. Uh, uh, I have a copy with me. Uh, I will, uh, I, 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 unfortunately, Bimrad or even Wallfish can't, uh, nobody can entertain <laughs> anybody. So <laughs> be ready with your uh, or tea. Uh, listen, thank you. Sorry, is it visible, sir? Yes. Yes, it is visible. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning again. And uh, now I'd like to mention a few about uh, BIMRAD. Basically, we know after the uh, delimination of the maintenance boundary of Bangladesh, Bangladesh Navy has took arduous effort to uh, just uh, establish a, a specific maritime think tank in Bangladesh. And that is, you know, that BIMRAD, Bangladesh Institute of Maritime Research and Development, which was inaugurated on 3rd, 3rd July 2018, and this is the nation's first maritime research institute. And uh, vision, we know that our vision and BIMRAD envisions to contribute to Walker's research, development, training, education, and thoughtful leadership, and formulating policies as well for the maritime-based utilization of maritime industry. And for this, we, our mission is to conduct quality research and focus on the development work, as well as awareness building activities. And the objectives also merge with our missions and visions that is development maritime awareness and conduct research that is promote maritime education training, knowledge sharing, a policy advocacy, as well as concerning associate uh, and collaborate with national and international agencies or private institutes of research based think tanks as well. We know our chief patron is our honorable chairman, that is the chief of the naval staff is our uh, chief patron of BIMRAD. And uh, our honorable chairman is the immediate past chief of naval staff of Bangladesh Navy, as soon as the chairman of the institute. And our organogram and areas of interest here we can show that our uh, area of interest focus on concerning the maritime efforts and security, maritime economy, sea resources and skill set, science and technology. Uh, basically, we focus uh, on the maritime economy and sea resources, that is focusing the sea resources as well as maritime tourism, marine fisheries, trade and transport, uh, connectivity issues, as well as marine pollution and biodiversity as well. And events of BIMRAD, I'd like to highlight few events of BIMRAD, only a few, not all. That is our, our um, we just conducted a international, an international seminar uh, in 2000. Uh, 18, that is concerning the maritime good governance and also uh, we conducted a seminar with the Dhaka University that is focusing the sustainable blue economy for development of Bangladesh in 2019 as well. And uh, celebration of first establishment anniversary of BIMRAD, where the Indian Chief of Naval Staff has participated and also the uh, other uh, Chief of Naval Staff of Bangladesh as well as uh, current and immediate, uh, immediate past as well as uh, former Chief of Naval Staff and other major I think our maritime resource personnel also participated in our seminars and that uh, anniversary celebration. And this is the discussion session with uh, concerning the role of BIMRAD in maritime research and security. And also we just conducted uh, the uh, national seminar in uh, Khulna that is coastal, uh, concerning coastal communities, communities in fostering the blue economy in southwestern region of Bangladesh that is in, uh, before December 2019, where we just focused on the issues and challenges of the coastal livelihoods who are dealing with the fisheries and other uh, coastal issues or uh, sectors, where uh, Honorable Mayor of uh, the Kulna region also presented in that seminar. And uh, we regularly conduct workshop focusing the maritime research, and that is on uh, February 2020, workshop on exploring research system on maritime issues. And the uh, national and international exposure of BIMRAD officials, BIMRAD officials more or less uh, in uh, every month participate in different uh, workshops and uh, conferences. And our uh, DG has participated in Indo-Pacific Regional Dialogue in 2019 and also NMF BIMRAD Dialogue that is National Maritime Foundation of India 
and uh, our DG has also uh, visited the Thales group of uh, Netherlands and also uh, we have conducted uh, seminar and uh, we have also signed MOU with NOTC China. And our advisor also participated in the Indo Pacific, uh, that is the Cis Indian Ocean Dialogue, IORA uh, Dialogue in India as well. And also uh, participated, uh, our DG also participated in a con conference uh, held in Colombo, Sri Lanka as well. And uh, basically, I already mentioned our uh, officials participated in different. Uh, national and international seminars and conferences. We have a expedition of uh, Bay of Bengal uh, recently in uh, January. And also discussion uh, between national and international maritime scholars and BIMRAT officials globally and uh, regionally. You know that BIMSTEC Secretary General has visit, visited uh, BIMRAT to have a call on uh, with our honorable chairman. And uh, this is the call on between BIMRAT officials and former chief of naval staff, Indian Navy. And this is the picture of, you know, uh, His Excellency Ambassador of Netherlands uh, to Bangladesh also visited Bimrad to uh, just discuss on the further cooperation. And uh, also uh, British High Commissioner also visited Bimrad in uh, 2019. And, uh, you know, uh, this is the former chief of uh, Sri Lanka Navy and now he is the foreign uh, secretary, foreign, uh, secretary of foreign ministry of Sri Lanka. This is the Admiral uh, Jarnath Kolombagi, sir. And, uh, you know, this is the Australian High Commissioner on Bangladesh. Uh, she just visited Bimrat to uh, just uh, discuss with our uh, chairman and Bimrat officials. And, you know, we have also discussed with the Institute of South Asian Studies, China. And uh, additional secretary, Blue Economic Cell Ministry of Power, Energy and Mineral Resources also visited Bimrat and uh, ICAD as well. And here I'd like to mention that the Project Director of Sustainable Coastal and Marine Fisheries Project, that is Mr. Hassan Ahmed Jodi, also visited Bimrat in March. And we also had a, a good discussion with how we can focus and uh, emerge with this project as well. And, uh, you know, during the pandemic since March, we are also maintaining our webinar and uh, discussion with uh, uh, personnel, that is, we held webinar uh, workshop uh, digital workshop on research methodology and uh, Dr. Afrin Hawk from Australia, she just uh, did uh, the discussion as well. And also we uh, conducted uh, a webinar focusing the evolving geopolitical scenario in the Indian Ocean region. And BIMRAD officials also had informal dis discussion with uh, Dr. David Brewster from Australia as well. And we signed MOU with uh, National Maritime Foundation Path Funder, DKAPCSA, Dhaka University, Bangabandhu Maritime University, Kulna University, Sri Bangla University, as well as NOTC China. And few uh, MOU also are under process like uh, BFRI, Thales Group, NIMA, and University Workshop. Uh, Ministry of Power, Energy, Bangladesh Coast Guard, as well as many more. The BIMRAD in Digital Platform, that's, that is our website, bimradbd.org and palbd.org. This is the new portal of our uh, BIMRAD, where we just regularly post our articles and publications. And this is our Facebook page, and this is our LinkedIn page. And also we are uh, active in YouTube channel as well. We publish uh, magazine Pulse four monthly and already five issues have been published. And this is our journal, BIMRAT journal, which is published annually. And our library, we are focusing to enhance our library and also e-library with uh, a number of books and e-books as well. And we have all, you have all already just uh, discussed and introduced with our officials. And we have planned and activities focusing the quality research project, uh, maritime education, capacity building campaign, policy advocacy, networking, and cooperation. Basically, currently, BIMRAD is uh, focusing research on livelihood of coastal fish farmer southwestern region in the challenges of marine fishermen and climate change issues, as well as maritime affairs and connectivity as well. And uh, this is the membership uh, base, founding member, general member, honorary member, life member, institutional member, associate corporate, and associate member. And maybe uh, we would discuss uh, probable areas of cooperation further uh, when our DG sir would uh, like to focus on that. And uh, thank you, that's all. Thank you very much. You. I think Chris is disconnected possibly. So Chris is trying to connect us in telephone. His computer is not possibly in connection now. So 
doctor uh, uh, wahab uh, yes. we can't we can't see you and now the doctor the uh, crisis country director he is gone so <laughs> how, how do we proceed very sad somehow i could not do it and uh, something has gone a uh, problem possibly with me, my side however please i uh, beg apology and allow me to continue from our side i chris will join whenever possible otherwise our colleagues are there so i think uh, chris is here is joining oh that's good yeah my apologies my internet dropped so i'm on my telephone now i'm having real problems with my internet at home i think uh, your internet has forgot that you are in bangladesh <laughs> not in <laughs> okay thank you doctor wahab please go uh, uh, um, um, thank you and uh, chris has given a little bit of introduction of world fish so i straight go to ecofish project ecofish 1 and 2 we started ecofish 1 2014 from june onward and continued until 2019 the ecofish project in full it is enhanced coastal fisheries in bangladesh and we focused on coastal rivers and uh, eventually we had to focus on the hills of fisheries conservation and management so there were some uh, major component uh, we uh, the primary goal was how to conserve the hills of fish and then uh, improve the management and how to help the fishing community to invite them to join in adaptive co-management that was the idea so with that idea dr jolil who just just introduced to you that scientist he worked on the biology of hilsha and based on the work so far done and he in fact in fact produced some very valuable research output that is how much is sustainable production of hilsha can be obtained in bangladesh water bodies and he gave a target to the government and to fulfill the target he proposed to make a fishing ban period for the hilsha to two days and exactly on the best of lunar cycle after studying early study and dissecting a 1600 16000 hills of fish of different size he came to conclusion this is the optimum breeding season in fact uh, throughout the uh, year hills of breeds but there is the optimum breeding season and government accepted that one and government gave the gazette notification so that's the beginning then we um, developed one important place as a sanctuary it is in borishal mehendi gaons and hisla 82 km long government developed five sanctuaries in the past uh, based their study and then we added another one so six sanctuary and we developed the co management and how to manage this sanctuary and we have worked with 100000 fishers people to fish them for their livelihood support program to address as well and women are brought to community savings group we supported them and the way we tried to develop the fisheries management committee at home at the village level then at the union level at the ghat level then jilla level and district level and through that adaptive co management we had been able to support bangladesh navy coast guard river police in their efforts to manage the fishery and that worked very well previously it used to be done by the task force but due to the adaptive co management committee there was a synergy between the stakeholders and the government and the joint forces work and results were tremendous since 2016 we have been gradually gradually getting the higher production and now we are expecting this year it may even exceed the all limit so the hills of production was 3 lakhs um 80000 ton and then immediately switch on to uh, over 5 
um, lakh metric ton, 0.5 million metric ton. And now we are expecting 0.6 million metric ton. That is the output of the uh, project. And the project directly cooperated, collaborated with Department of Fisheries and a large number of different partners like the BFRI, universities, IUCN, and WCS, also other international partners were there too. And we provided some important policy and government took it and then government uh, took it as a, uh, and uh, developed and uh, just notified as uh, rules. That is the Hilsha uh, used to be um, uh, uh, caught at 10 to 15 centimeter. Now government has uh, increased it 25 centimeter. And the uh, important development is that now the gill net uh, mesh size is 6.5 centimeter. It was 4.5 centimeter before. Now the small jatka will be allowed to pass through easily. So these are the success of the EcoFish first phase. And one more thing we have done, it was a byproduct that we proposed to the government to develop an MPA, Marine Protected Area, still called Marine Reserve, in the Nizum Deep, just below. And as a, a Navy team, you would understand the place that the Nizum Deep Rangabali, Chor Fashion, Chor Kukri Bukri, below that, uh, a 3,188 square kilometer of area have been declared as the protected area. Ecofish project also directly involved in, deal, in uh, studying it, proposing it, and delineating procedure that has been taken up by the government. So these are the Ecofish assignments beside the fish develop 300 community fish guard to assist the department of fisheries coast guard then river police in their efforts to maintain the uh, the kinds of the government uh, uh, during the jack fishing ban as well as the brood fish ban if we now go back to the, the I'll share our presentation later on. Now, if not now, I'll send it to uh, Commodore Hawk later on so that you can share amongst your friends, colleagues. And then yes, it can forward to uh, provide its second phase to World Fish. And as uh, Chris has said, we got support until Mars, but with expectation it will be four years further. So in that one, they said enough has been done in the Magna region. So keep your 25% efforts only so that the best continues and the adaptive co-management, community efforts, community savings, they are all institutional. The host community and also go for biodiversity conservation and improve the ecosystem health and support the marine fisheries focusing on the cost uh, artisanal fishers of small scale fisheries in the ZOR, USA language, ZOR, Jones, that's Cox's Bazaar. We all know due to the huge influx of refugees, there has been a problem and the people are all, even the donor agencies, international community, all taking care of 1.1 million refugees, ignoring the host communities. So USAID suggested go for supporting the host communities. So now the Ecofish 2 will focus on the development of resilience of the Naf River fishing, fishing communities, as well as the taken up to Mohishkali Island, this entire area, the fishing communities, uh, what is their status? How could we help them in self-resilient? How to improve their fishing? How to help them to maintain the security and safety at sea? And Dr. Zulil will see the um, cast composition, cast assessment, as well as he will again set up a MSY, uh, maximum sustainable yield. So that's one part. We are doing the bioresourcing um, mapping. We are also 
trying to collect the juvenile as well as water quality parameters to correlate with the pollution that is incoming through the rivers and we would like to connect the zoo of the alternate uh, livelihood support uh, for the fishing communities like marine um, aquaculture, marine farming, seaweed farming, green mussel farming, crab farming, that we have already started. And, and we have taken up a plan that each year we will train 500 fisherwomen or fisherwomen in dry fishing, improved, safe dry fishing, and we'll provide them with the dry, pelagic fish caught, freshly caught, and they will be trained how to make this one so that they can earn money, they can, and a market linkage is developed. So these are the areas we are currently working, and we are, uh, we have targeted 12,000 Five, uh, 12,000 household during this four years period because it's a biodiversity project. So it's our plan that we will train these people. They will create an example so that other can scale the activities they are doing. So that is the way EcoFish 2 is progressing. Beside that, we are concentrating on the Nizumbi for MSP, Marine Special Planning, IUCN, and Shah Jalal University helping us developing the uh, plan as well as MSP plan as well, and there will be livelihood support. And the lastly, if I say that we have got one opportunity since the fishing in the NAP river is totally closed, Myanmar does not fish there as well, so harboring huge quantity of fish usually 170 metric ton fish used to be caught there. These fishes are not caught. So the fish is plenty of fish there. But, and now we are going to assess it possible to develop another MP marine protected area, taking the estuary of Nap and St. Martin Island and the entire area. So that potential is going on. Uh, that potential has been explored and a team is working under the EcoFish 2 project. So just we conceived this idea and gradually we are expanding and uh, we have a plan to uh, make a sustainable fishery in for the artisanal fishers. So that's the introduction, but my colleagues, uh, may kindly join if they wish to add something. Besides, definitely Chris has got something to add to it. And that's all for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris is going to speak now. Uh, okay, uh, um, just I want to add a few things. Uh, Dr. Jolil. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just uh, when uh, I, from the Bimbred presentation, I found some common areas of interest. interest. Uh, for example, uh, resource exploration, uh, exploitation management, and uh, biodiversity conservation, ecosystem health, uh, livelihood. Those are the common areas uh, that we can exchange our knowledge. Uh, we can uh, form, we can consider ourselves whenever we uh, formulate a research uh, program or implement or present research uh, or uh, any project development project then we can consider each other as a partner research partner or implementing partner uh, wherever possible uh, that's a uh, specifically mentioned those are the common areas thank you Thank you, Dr. Jalil.
anybody from uh, Wallfish would like to add uh, any more points? And Dr. Hidayatullah, do you want to add a few points? Sir, um, thank you. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Jolil Bhai already addressed the, the, the areas of mutual interest. So I think apart from that, uh, these are the, what he mentioned, these are the very common area we are rightly working and the immediate cooperation could, can be done between us and for other there are some other options uh, but i think uh, we need to think about those uh, later but uh, what i feel and, and what i believe when i saw the mail uh, from bimrad uh, is basically the focus area of their recent activity is to mainly helping the coastal communities so i think uh, the best possible way to go with the uh, current strength that we have and the, the interest that they are showing. So I think uh, for, for now, I am just stick with Dr. Jolil Bhai's uh, suggestions. Thank you, sir. Okay, so that is from our side. If our uh, leader, Chris, wish to add, that would be highly appreciated. No, I think you've covered everything, uh, Dr. Wahab. I mean, you've given the broad scope of the project. Um, Obviously, USAID in this second phase are concerned to address the livelihoods of communities um, and not so much of a focus on the science per se. Um, but uh, I think Dr. Wahab has, uh, has explained everything. Thank you. We have been highly impressed knowing the Bimrad activities of the past as well as within a short period of time. You have covered so much nicely and uh, uh, if I add a little bit that the Up Bengal fisheries uh, that is only producing 6,60,000.66 million metric ton, it is not expected from Bay of Bengal. I believe Bay of Bengal has more potential than it is recorded. And I sincerely believe that there is a hidden harvest, a huge amount of fishes are caught, not recorded. So we would provide the true outlines how to record it properly. So you'd work on a hidden harvest as well as monitor and see whether the Bangladesh's present cash statistics can be improved to an international level. Ecofish will start to do that in the second year as well. And because of the flowing of mighty rivers, Gangetic, Brahmaputra, Meghna, it appears that Bay of Bengal is one of the richest ecosystem, but it is being polluted in different ways. So we have already started addressing not to um, throw the plastics and not to throw the other uh, undissolved substances through the drains. Unfortunately, we cannot control Dhaka, but it is possible to advocate in other places. So we need to take care of that one. So I sincerely believe that through Ecofish project, we want to develop an awareness, we want to mobilize the people of this country. And for that purpose, recently we had held a, a, a wonderful, successful program bringing World Fish Headquarters staff as well as countries, notable people, uh, to discuss on the marine biodiversity, oceanic economy, as well as fishers' welfare. And with that mission, Ecofish, under the leadership of Chris, will continue to provide policy support to the Bangladesh government, how to maintain the biodiversity, not only fish, but the megafauna, turtles, whales, um, dolphins, um, and, uh, bottlenose porpoises. There is also word uh, Irabuti uh, dolphin too. We want to maintain that biodiversity, we want to save the sharks as well as we would like to improve the livelihood of the fishers, not only at the ground level for the household, but we, want, we would like to help them improve their fishing activities where if possible, we'll provide them um, mobile telephone, telephone for their in mobility with the um, uh, geographical point GPS reading. Uh, uh, we gradually providing them some 
um, mobile with apps so that they provide the real time data to our scientists as well. So many ways, we have different ways of interventions. And I believe that the BIMRAD, some activities and our activities coincides and we can be benefited through participation and cooperation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, here I uh, just stop until we hear from you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Wahab. Uh, things are uh, so that you are so thorough and all the activities are at your fingertips. <laughs> very good. Excellent presentation on your activities. Thank you very much. Kind uh, of, very kind of and you. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I hail from Hisla. So there is a little connection. Oh, okay. very good, very good. It's I established so, that one. Ecofish established that the, and that is the <laughs> mine of the, it is the mine of the Jatka, as well as yeah, we have started okay. safeguarding right. the Jatfish uh, as well. Various activities we have been doing. So, uh, uh, so there are, uh, we are uh, uh, closing towards our collaboration. So uh, just is, I don't know uh, others, for my clarification, uh, actually, what is the difference between uh, marine protected area, MPA and MSA, maritime spa oh. marine spatial planning. So uh, uh, the, just, to, just for your information, we had um, also, as you have seen, the, the BIMRAD has made a memorandum of understanding with the Chinese uh, NOTC. And they are also trying to uh, do some uh, maritime MSA in Bangladesh. So there, yes. there is also some uh, request. So I'm trying to correlate your area of interest, our area of interest, and Chinese area of interest. So the, that's what we can discuss. And um, uh, I believe also Dr. Jalil and uh, others also said thank you very much. There are some areas of cooperation uh, as, a, as far as resource exploration concerned, biodiversity, livelihood, uh, and coastal communities, and uh, also importantly, the security, safety and security. Uh, these are all at sea. Uh, there are high uh, at sea. So uh, pollution is another uh, factor. Our chairman is very much interested to address uh, those issues. So uh, uh, I will also uh, request our uh, BIMRA team to uh, come up with the, their views. But before that, I'll request you to clarify the uh, difference between MPA and MSA and uh, what you do in getting approval, approval for MFA from the government. Thank you. Hello. Yes, please. Um, okay, uh, the, I'm over, over to you. Thank you. Uh, is it uh, is it okay or is is getting some problem? Uh, Rashad, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir, yes. I can, I can hear you. We oh, can hear, yeah. Clear. Yeah, yeah. Please. Okay, doctor, uh, go ahead. Who is speaking now? Uh, nobody is speaking. Uh, floor, the floor is yours. Oh, if the floor is open, then I can say that Ecofish is a project. We are the working team. Our leader, Chris, is here. Any modality of cooperation, the way you want to proceed, that is the administrative, uh, it is the discussion at the administrative level. So I won't put any of my comments. I only can say that there is a possibility of our co strong cooperation. Say, for example, even um, taking uh, uh, Bimrad and um, uh, Ecofish or wild fish effective, we can more effectively handle the marine biodiversity, marine fisheries production, marine biodiversity conservation, as well as the people's life. We can formulate better um, uh, policies uh, to convince the government we can work together. I believe there is a huge scope for getting benefit from each other. So uh, from the project point of view, that is my comment, but 
please my country director and yourself talk your level how you want to proceed for this cooperation and if it um, if it takes a shape then gradually the team can come closer and work together as well uh, sir can uh, i add a few words about the questions uh, sir asked about the mpa and msp oh no no the, the mp and msp question was there i didn't see that there was a question if there is please you continue otherwise i can also uh, give some input too yeah just i'm uh, uh, starting but you can add uh, later he was asking how we are uh, getting the approval of a mpa that vision uh, we have so first of all we assessed the mpa about the resource biodiversity and everything livelihood then we uh, we uh, forwarded the proposal through the department of fisheries uh, in the ministry of fisheries and livestock then uh, after several conversation meeting with uh, different stakeholders they decided uh, uh, the uh, along with they also connected uh, different other uh, other organization like iucn and wcs world conservation society uh, uh, with their assessment and comments then uh, all together we put forwarded a management plan along with the delineated delineated area to the ministry then ministry uh, uh, proceeded with the uh, marine reserve there is a regulation about the declaration of mpa and marine reserve so under that clauses ministry of fisheries and livestock uh, declared through the gazette that the, uh, it is a uh, mpa and the msp is not a declaration it is the management plan a special planning to manage the mpa the in different areas they are considering the uh, biodiversity and the livelihood and the impact of uh, different habi uh, habitats uh, the, the special plan for different areas uh, has to be uh, planned and implemented through the msp that's in brief thank you sir. dr jalil uh, in in response please allow me to add few points yes. uh, Dear Chair and the colleagues, possibly you are all aware that in the AC conference, uh, there is a global agreement that each of the maritime country has to declare 10% of its territory as MPA or marine reserve. And there is a goal for, I think, 2030. So, our Bangladesh has to respond to that positively as well. Now, uh, should we go for 10% or we can, how far we can go? We have one marine reserve that is declared by the Department of Fisheries or Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock. Inside the Bay of Bengal is a far up but not managed. I think our naval forces will know, but generally people does not know and does not follow any rules regulation. Later on, Forest Department has declared another marine protected area at the source of no ground below the Sundarban at the deepest areas to safeguard the marine megafauna. This is one of the world's most important and very, uh, uh, I say, um, uh, important and uh, valuable resource there. So that is not scientifically managed, but declared. So at least there is no harvesting or there is no exploitation of the marine megafauna. So in response to government's interest, in response to the world body's uh, global request, Ecofish did it as a byproduct. And what Ecofish did, Nizumdeep, Sor Fashion, a part of that, uh, Chor Mantas, Rangabali, that area that was studied for three years by joint team of Ecofish and IUCN. And WCS, they did the megafauna study along that inshore and offshore areas. Then jointly we developed that proposal and there was a series of meetings. It took a long time. 
and then we had been able to attract the attention of the Minister of Fisheries and Livestock, and they took it as a, an opportunity that Bangladesh will then have some um, proportion of the need made. So a lot, there are several questions, there are several challenges as well, and then Forest Department said, yes, we'll cooperate, but we, you need to exclude the Marine Park of Nizum. We said, yes, we'll do it. So there were inter-ministerial meetings as well. So Secretary Raisulala Mandol um, taken it very seriously and eventually a consensus as well as the, you know, that the Ministry of Law and Justice, they also heard this thing as well. So eventually we have been successful in getting getting it done, but that is done. How to manage it? What is the plan? So we have got all the basic data about the population, about the job, about the engagement of the people in different uh, livelihood aspects. We have all the data. We have got the birds, megafauna, fishing, fish, efforts, everything. So uh, what happened, uh, now the government asked us, please give us a marine uh, protected area plan. Then we have given a plan, MPA plan. We call it MR because marine, when it comes MPA, it goes to uh, forest. So we called it MR, marine reserve. But in the revised marine uh, plan of uh, Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock, MP will be under the fisheries as well. However, so we have submitted a marine plan and management plan that would be discussed on 14th of this month. And, but we have given the responsibility to IUCN to develop the MSP plan, marine special plan, where the Navy will put their place, where there will be fishing, where there is a possibility of tourism, where the people of uh, the megafauna sing, where the bird observer will work, how many days fishing should be allowed, how many times should not be allowed, that sort of total thing. Marine special planning is a big thing and developed country knows better, particularly there is expertise in New Zealand, there is expertise in other countries too. However, it's a beginning. Uh, from the economic point of view, our own status, we have started marine protected area planning. That is great. It will take some time. And we have similar plan for the Tecna region as well. So possibly uh, with the Dr. Dolil helps and my additional points, you got the point, isn't it? Thank you very much, Dr. Rob. Yes, sir, we got your point very much. Uh, uh, please allow our team to uh, raise some queries. Uh, I, I hope uh, I will request our research officers. If you have some points, please uh, go ahead. And then uh, other senior I, uh, officers. I, uh, Commander Kazi, I had a, I had a clarification request. Um, Dr. Wahab and Mr. Jalil have been uh, using the term marine reserve and marine protected area. Essentially, are these two interchangeable or interchangeable. is there a difference? In interchangeable. interchangeable. They're interchangeable. Yeah. Okay. But MPA, right. as far as MPA is concerned, you said uh, the term refers to the forest, isn't it? Uh, uh, currently, is currently, in the yeah. rules regulation of the Bangladesh government, it is under the forest since the, since the wildlife, since the megafauna comes under wildlife, that's why it was under the forest. But it was found that if the forest declared the MPA only, that concentrate on megafauna and plants, but Ministry of Fisheries need to take care of the MP as well because of the fisheries resources and the management of water resources comes under fisheries too. So we are at the, it's not me, it's the ministry is at the revision stage of its mandate that MPA will be done by the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock as well. So no problem, it is interchangeable. Dr. Ohab, uh, does the you are talking about the living resources? Uh, is it, how about non-living resources at sea? Does it fall under MPA or MR? What do you say? Uh, in marine protected area, in fact, it is the biological resources. But 
if we consider the other economic resources of gas, oil exploration, that sort of thing, that does not come under MPA, but it's come under a special planning, that if there is some resource, that there is a, uh, a mine or something else, that part has to be managed differently. That's why it comes under a planning, uh, but not MPA. MPA, in fact, the biological resources of plants and animals, megafauna, fish, birds, and everything, as well as livelihood of the people too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, our research officers, please, if you have any points. Uh, uh, Dr. Hoth, thank uh, you very much for your nice uh, presentation. I have one small question or query. Uh, can you explain what, what are the requirements for declaring an area, marine protected area or marine reserve? What are the requirements? Uh, uh, there are specific requirements for that. I don't have all the papers and uh, but also with me at the moment, but I can give you my common sense idea that marine protected area, it has to be marine. A protected area where protect, uh, there is a need for protection, there is over exploitation, there is a risk of endangering the species concerned. Third, we need to know who are dependent on the resources so that if the area is protected, none of the people are affected. So these are important area. At the same time, a sovereign country who has got the right on the marine, they can declare the marine protected area. That is important as well. And also, there should be a consensus among different users of that. Yeah, because we have got uh, say, for example, 30 ministries. What are the ministries that is uh, necessary to know all these things? I believe that there is a naval uh, exp um, uh, representation in that meeting too. We have considered that, that the naval vessel can properly go on, there is no problem. We have considered that the other ministry is not affected, water transport ministry is not affected in that. Uh, uh, the, uh, there will be a um, uh, uh, big port, and the port is not affected. So many, many factors need to be considered, but I believe that we need to be very sensitive about the protection of certain area so that it does not go against the interest of the people, not against the interest of any conflicting interest um, can cause any problem in the long run. There are sort of many factors brought under consideration, but I should have been more academic if I had got the paper to tell you exactly what is it, but I said no, from my no, common sense. That's okay, that's okay, doctor. Uh, this uh, of the hand is okay, okay. Anybody, any, any, anybody else, uh, the research officers, please? I'm encouraging I have also. Small query Which ministry uh, is responsible to declare an area, marine protected area? Is Ministry of Fishery or Ministry of uh, Forest or some other ministry? In fact, we are a country of 45, 47 years. Many things is yet to be nicely segregated and partitioned. Currently, MPA declaration is done by the forest only, but the Ministry of Fisheries and Life Research believe that it is also their responsibility. Therefore, they didn't call it MPA, they call it Marine Reserve. But in fact, we are on the same page, same country, same resources. So I think Ministry of Fisheries and Ministry of um, Forest can jointly do that. And if Bimbrad can take up initiative, why not Bimbrad, World Fish, Dog, all agencies come together inclusively. We study certain area and we make a proposal and give it to the government. And then we find out who is the appropriate uh, place. So before that, we undertake a joint research, joint discussion, joint seminar, workshop, as well as bathymetric mapping, resource mapping, what not. At that stage, it won't be difficult who, who should do it. I believe it's a, if it's a major water, then it should be Ministry of Fisheries. If it is major forest, it should be Ministry of Forest. But my sincere belief that we should be all one pace to manage together so that there is no question of territoriality. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Roham. Okay. Uh, our uh, research officers. You may have interest in the EcoFish as well, EcoFish ongoing program, livelihood, what we are doing, what you are doing, we can have introductions on that area as too. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Wahab, sir, thank you for your uh, nice explanation, which have enriched our learnings and knowledge as well. Uh, basically, this is my query that as uh, on uh, one side, we are planning on Bangladesh is planning to expand the marine tourism in different island uh, areas or coastal areas uh, like, uh, you know, the St. Martin Islands or other island, Nijhum uh, Deep as well and in the Mohish Kali, Shonadia Deep as well. And are also in the Sundarban area, coastal area too. But on the other side, we are also uh, focusing the marine protected area. So uh, I think this two issue is contradictory. So I think how we can ensure the marine tourism or the development of area, areas, island areas or coastal areas without uh, harming or without affecting the marine biodiversity or the fisheries or uh, all the plants and fauna like all these. So uh, we have to focus on then how we can uh, manage both issues. One side um, development. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. In Madagascar, one island declared marine protected area. And that marine protected area was meant to protect the holothurian that is sea cucumber, one precious animal. Chinese like it as cancer medicine, and the world body also like it very much. So there was a huge pressure on holothurian or sea cucumber. Government declared uh, its uh, MPA. And gradually, that holothurian become big and uh, um, abundant and there was a tourism industry expanded that the uh, foreigners uh, come there and they stay there and they like the holothurian um, sea cucumber dish and that's the way the tourism expanded in that area so mpa is not to protect or prevent tourism mpa special planning will allow tourism where is possible. So that will be part of MPA too. So there is no contradiction at all. It would improve the tourism facility. Yeah, one word I can add, sir, that the ecotourism, uh, but uh, also, but uh, over tourism, the, for example, in our St. Martin Island, it is, uh, it is not under the ecotourism principle. So government is planning to implement the ecotourism or more restriction uh, to manage the uh, environmentally friendly way the, the uh, St. Martin Island. That's that they, they are going to uh, impose the restriction about the tourism in uh, St. Martin Island gradually. That's all. Thank you, Dr. Zulis. Thank you, Dr. Zulis. Uh, uh, I just want to add a few things uh, with this question. I think I, we need to be clear about the concept of MSP and MPA, and many of you already know that, but in, uh, in response of uh, Nahin Nasrin's questions, I just would like to add this. So the basic thing is like when we work on MPA, it is basically restricting human activity in a designated or targeted areas to preserve that, uh, the biological resources and cultural resources, that means livelihood and people's life, that's all. And when we talk about multiple use of marine resources, for example, whole Bay of Bengal. So there will be a certain place which is specifically designated for MPA. There is no human activities. And the other part, there will be multiple uh, stakeholders like industry, um, then the government, and then, then like shipping industry, of course. Then there should be some area of um, mineral extractions and natural and well gas, for example. And then it will be also, yeah, biological uh, importance habitat. And, and all this. So the process MSP deals with is a process when they basically manage all those stakeholders in a way that nobody hampers other works. So everything will go simultaneously and very nicely. But when we talk MPA, it's specifically in that, that area when human activity will be restricted. And MSP just manage all activities in the whole area. So this is the basic difference. The sustainable and, use of resources. Yeah, sustainable use of resources. Thank you, sir. And, 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 uh, and I think I would like to add with another thing with this. For example, when we talk about the cooperation with the Navy, I think Sar was talking about bathymetric map. I know Bangladesh Navy already have their bathymetric map because they used to 
like uh, Save in many areas because of that. They have shipping facilities. They have also the old equipments to survey the bottom. So they are probably it, this is a kind of internal resources we don't have yet. This could be available tools that we can use it for the future. And if not done, if I am wrong, that could be done in the future. And also, uh, I just want to add a few, few more things since I just took this opportunity to talk about this. Uh, it, there will be a very good cooperation with Bangladesh, uh, Bimbrad and, and Ecofish this, to take more samples in the in terms of deeper water. While we do samplings for MPA and other things, we have our own, we spend money to take samples from, from particular sites, but with Navy, we can access a larger area, more deeper area, and with much better, I think they also have very high graphic equipments and very uh, well set sophisticated water quality, quality checking parameters such as Magico. That can be used to basically generate more reliable data with larger spatial extent that could be used for MPA for the maybe more MPAs and also better spatial planning. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hedayat. Also, there is a colleague in the um, Navy uh, in Bimbrad who has got expertise in diving as well. So yeah. that would be an added benefit. Yeah, so I think that would be fantastic because uh, I, I think Ecofish or maybe Bimbrad can also think about working in the San Martin areas because we have a coral reef. It's a kind of dying coral reef. Nobody really recognizes it. It is a wall map. Nobody recognizes that Bangladesh has a kind of coral reef, but we have few of them. Basically, it's the, the extent is not that big, so nobody recognizes that. So we have, we, there are a few people working on, on coral reef because this is usually, um, I mean, people really like that because of this diversity and the, the, the advantage of um, uh, like boosting uh, fisheries uh, around coral reef. And uh, many of the MPAs in, around the world basically based on those coral reefs. So if we have a kind of people, because the Bangladesh Navy has those divers, and we can work jointly to explore more how we can, we can really take this to the, the, to the world community that we also have a coral reef that should, be, should need to be recognized well in the world map of coral reef that can contribute the biodiversity of wild fisheries and, and other things. So that could be a good way to cooperate with the Bimbrad and, 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 and Ecofish. I think um, you all might be thinking about this in the future. So there are certain other options maybe uh, to work on, for example, climate change. I think there is an option to work on the climate change issues because this is a growing issue. So Ecofish is not currently working on that aspect. But in the future, there is option to work uh, maybe out of the box uh, going there and... Now, one fish will do. One so fish. Ecofish is a project, yeah, but yeah. one fish has got a big one program fish. on climate change as well. So yeah, yeah. it's coming up. Yeah, sorry. So, 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 uh, I think yeah, you, yeah. You, you corrected it. Uh, because yes. we have a climate change uh, unit uh, from... Where yeah, we have got expertise as well. So, Very good expertise. Yeah. So, so I think there is an option also because I see that there is a scope that uh, Bimbrad uh, wrote on their web page to work on climate change issues. So there would be a good option to work on those because we have huge expertise in the world fish family that can really uh, cooperate each other and more work on the climate change issues in the near future. Uh, thank you, sir. That's all from me. Good. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. So uh, colleagues, this is the thing from our side. Okay, okay, Dr. Uh, well, let's see, uh, any, any more queries from- Yes, uh, please, please. Yeah. Sir, uh, I have a query. Okay, I'd sure. like to put on query. First thing, sir, I have to, uh, two query. So first query is, uh, as per the commitment of Bangladesh, as you told, 10% uh, MPA should be declared, and it has to be declared by 2020. So- 2030. 2030, okay. So, uh, uh, Right at this moment, pro probably it is around 2.5 or something like this. Two percent. It has increased now. It has increased okay. now. After the so, after this Nizum dip, it has increased about 4.5 something. Okay. So uh, how much we have prepared ourselves to declare 10% uh, MPA by 2030? Uh, around um, 12,000 square kilometer probably. So this is one question. Second thing. Um, we have heard different debate in different workshop that what should come first, either MPA or MSP. Because MSP is total planning. So after planning, we should do something. Okay, whatever might be the case, both the cases, we need a lot of data. We need the uh, data and so we need this survey vessel for collecting those type of data. So how much prepared we are to acquire some survey vessel. Thank you, sir. 
very good question the first question uh, where we are in fulfilling the world body's commitment uh, from us that is 10 percent i don't know that bangladesh government knows and from a small project and effort of international organization uh, world fish we have added a bit but rest lies on the bangladesh government regarding its policy and the second question i have never thought of but i believe that we need a total msp of the entire coastal area and part of the bay of bengal and then gradually gradually set up that will take time if there is any low hanging place to have the low hanging fruit why not you do that so that's the way the swas of no ground has been done already and uh, the nizhum deep this area has been very carefully done without fuse or affect any problem at all and also a careful study is going on in the technop areas but i do fully agree with you and a country need to have special planning for, um, on um, before doing all this thing but uh, who is comes first uh, yes question that who is you need to do it now so we have uh, i think i'm not the right person to answer this thing but i agree with you and i agree with that part that i think in the entire coastal area should have a good planning and then go ahead so Uh, we cannot wait for until that but i believe that regarding the data generation bimrad and neval force and their ability is excellent who can do better than you sir i want to add it thank you sir if you would give me permission sir so in response to the question of 10 percent mpa uh, i would i would say that uh, if coffee is working to to like uh, uh, to propose another uh, mp areas around the nas river estuary and adjacent coastal water bodies as sir already said in, in his speech but uh, this will not probably make 10 percent what uh, we are aiming for so what we see uh, next to coral reef the most diverse ecosystem in the world ocean is mangrove areas so we have single largest mangrove in the world it's like kuna mangrove areas and it is a hugely diverse area if we see just local studies that have been done over the years the diversity of species is huge unfortunately uh, for some reason we are not really thinking about declaring an mpa near sundarban i think because sundarban is like by uh, this is scientifically proved that they are the habitat they produce like because of the nematophores and other like you know uh, the plant uh, bodies in the water and hugely detritus and debris they support both small pelagic and and benthic small fish those lives in the the mud so this is hugely uh, recognized as a best habitat to uh, for the juvenile species that is the basically main criteria to declare an mpa in terms of fisheries productivity so probably some parts of uh, sundarban uh, which is difficult to access for some other people easy to access for maybe or maybe the same like for bimrad uh could generate more data and and, and based on that uh, based on the mutual interest and, and what government think uh, we can work together to declare another possible mpa areas near sundarban i think this is this is the best area probably to declare uh, above all those areas it's my personal uh, opinion no Because it's a very it's a very good information thank you dr hedai uh, and there is a potential for the, because small country if we take 10% is a huge area to go for mpa we need to explore where we can add value to it so it's i think it's a very good suggestion yeah thank uh, you okay thank you so uh, colleagues that's uh, from our part regarding the mpa and the so any more pertinent question regarding the eco fish activities other activities Dr. Oham, I have one uh, more query. The Bangladesh coast, it is not a fixed like many other countries. It goes frequent change of the, due to erosion and uh, siltation. So these, uh, so is it not difficult to define an area MPA or MR uh, considering these uh, erosion and uh, uh, siltation? You are absolutely right. Uh, beside the um, uh, the places where we have declared so far, uh, uh, we consider that thing. And uh, say, for example, if after hundred years there is another island develops beneath this declaration, we may go a little bit further down as well. 
So the time will save her to do, and the government will decide. We have done the immediate need to protect the Hilsha breeding ground, to protect the uh, migratory birds, to protect the bottlenose dolphin as well as uh, bottlenose porpoises and Ilabuti dolphin and Gansetti dolphin, to protect the other valuable species. And uh, I believe the time will speak. And uh, yes, uh, your concern is very valuable. Should I add okay, Dr. Dr. Wall? Could right. I? May we ask for right. other questions? Huh? Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, I think uh, we will do little, um, uh, yeah, we'll try to sum it up because it's uh, going to be already one and a half hour. Uh, yes, please. We have already going to take it. Uh, we have taken. So I'll um, uh, request uh, any other, we have also research officers. Uh, um, uh, do you have any, any, any points at this moment to comment? Research I, want to, I want to bring one more uh, Rashid, hold on. Rashid, Rashid, hold on. I have uh, nothing from my side, sir. Okay, Ritika? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, uh, I regularly follow the works and activities of EcoFish2 project as I follow their pages and other activities. So through this, I regularly know their activities. So, so from this discussion, actually, it is very much clear that the Bimrat's view or motto or vision is very much related to Ecofish uh, to project. As our chairman, honorable chairman, sir, is very much aware of uh, of uh, coastal livelihood, marine fisheries. Uh, he is very much interested on on those aspects. So now it is. I think this is time to connect all those points and uh, find out the mutual way or of cooperation. So. It should be in an immediate way, I think. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, Rashid, uh, quickly go ahead. Uh, sir, I want to bring another point in notice. Uh, Dr. Wahab, sir, and the other colleagues of uh, Wallfish and Ecofish, they are telling that your one of the uh, area is um, biodiversity monitoring. So nowadays in the world, there for monitoring the biodiversity, they use the remote sensing networking. That means for uh, biodiversity monitoring, we need to need we need to know the parameters of the water quality. For example, the salinity, the temperature, the oxygen level, acidification, etc., et the pollution level, etc. So what they're doing, they're putting some boy inside some coastal area or where we want to monitor, and they put the uh, some sensor like the uh, uh, PT hundred or temperature gauge or different. Uh, a sensor okay, there. No, no, Rashad, and, please, sir, question and, about, question sir, question. About, and uh, they are setting the wireless communication set. That wireless communication directly send the data to the real time data to the laboratory. So, for example, we have a laboratory in Dhaka. So, that parameters we can get directly in laboratory. But in our case, we are not using this, uh, this system. Uh, so, there is a time lag between not we are monitoring the real time scenario. So, do we have any plan or in future? or in near future to set up all these items, I mean the remote sensing monitoring system. We oh. don't have any, uh, thank you very much. It's a very, uh, very good level of discussion. We don't have that plan in our project because uh, we need to address what our donors also prefer. I believe that uh, if the support from uh, Neval Bimrad come along, uh, we may strengthen that area as well. Um, but at the moment, we have got a plan that the biodiversity is monitored at the um, landing center, at the uh, fishing boat or trawlers, as well as monitoring of the juveniles. And in the long run, possibly from year two, there is a plan. I'm just with my colleagues yet, just I'm telling you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, DNA. There is a environmental DNA method by which it can be done. This is the most modern. About three, four years back, the first papers uh, published uh, um, in USA as well as Japanese scientists are working. So we may go in that direction. But uh, the point you have said, all correct. And if we have got fruitful collaboration, we may look into and explore that into we have got limitation in knowledge in that area. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Wahab. Um, uh, I guess so. Uh, um, we, we had a lot of discussion, but our uh, advisor might have some uh, queries. Uh, uh, Rear Admiral Sawar, uh, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, and that uh, at Bhimrat, we are in the process of undertaking a project with Shere Bangla Krishi Vishwavid Daloy for restoration of coral uh, species in St. Martin's Island. So as I told you, as I was a diver, so I, I used to dive in the coral and uh, for restoration of coral in the St. Martin's Island, we have we, are, we have undertaken a project with hopefully this winter we will start the work of the project hopefully god willing this is number one. number two i was uh, curious if you have the stock of tuna available in the bay of bengal especially in our exclusive economic zone, in our area, sea area, do you have any data on the availability of stocks of tuna? In if you have, uh, I would be interested to know. This is number two. Number three, I am also curious to know, at this point of time, are you conducting any research project related to, uh, to fisheries, uh, overall uh, marine the biodiversity or any kind of fisheries project or climatic project or biodiversity project, specific project, uh, either through your own funding or through foreign funding? These three questions I was just interested in. Uh, these three are very big questions. So I answered to your first one. Uh, the first question was, uh, not question, just information. We do appreciate your collaboration with uh, Kazi Ahsan Habi, Professor Kazi Ahsan Habi, possibly colleague and student. Uh, he did his um, PhD from Korea. He has got uh, expertise as well, the interest in biodiversity of the Coral Reef, uh, Shere Bangla University. So wish you good luck with that work. And uh, at some stage, we'll meet together when our uh, MP research team will also talk to you. It's a Dr. Shubrato from Shahzalal University. He is uh, working in that area. The second one you asked me, is there any data on tuna fisheries? We do not have any data uh, regarding the tuna fisheries. It's a big fishery and Bangladesh is interested to explore and exploit, sustainably exploit uh, the fishery, uh, including the uh, Sri Lankan island, and Sri Lanka is being benefited uh, by the tuna fishery. Uh, our effort will be, I don't know how much will be successful. It's a heavily migrated fish, whether they stay in Bay of Bengal and they go and come back. It's seasonality, biodiversity, and it's availability in Bangladesh waters have not yet been done. And uh, I do not have idea, even if anybody has ever done. Uh, if Hedayat has got any idea, or Dr. Zulil has got any idea, please uh, help me in uh, answering this thing. And the third one, I think um, uh, it, it took a $242 million project that is funded by World Bank, Sustainable Coastal and Marine Fisheries Project, would take care of that one. But uh, ECOFIS does not have any plan for doing such a huge scale program, but our country director knows better about the future research plan of world fish. So that is not in my jurisdiction. Hey, right. Dr. Noz, um, Jolil, have you got yes. very briefly, can you say something yes. about the yes. tuna fisheries? Yes. Yes, and, I, and I have got some questions regarding the Bimrad's um, uh, coastal fisheries support as well as the fishing support as well. Please chair, allow me later on, but let's see um, Dr. Jolil and Hedai like to add one or two points. Very briefly. Just, just I want to uh, add my experience even in a tuna exploration uh, that was conducted in 2017 by under Bimstek uh, and the Safdek, the Southeast Asian uh, research vessel, uh, 
that took part. I was one of the 10 uh, scientists participated in the Tuna explosion. That, that was the uh, long line, PLL, pelagic long line uh, methods. And the, all the uh, countries around the Bay of Bengal participated. And the, uh, there was not a concrete stock assessment, but we found some evidence that we uh, relatively in Bangladesh, uh, on the Bangladesh that, that there are the uh, yellow fin tuna that are very valuable. And we cut two, uh, uh, two very big, one is the medium size, another one is a very large size tuna, yellow fin tuna. That indicate that there are yellow fin tuna that's a very valuable in the Bangladesh water. And relatively, we compared other re regions, but it was in that explosion, uh, Bangladesh got the higher mark, but uh, it is not the uh, total stock assessment. But we have another shallow water tuna, uh, locally called Homaita, in the Cox's uh, Bazar region, uh, very available, but it is uh, it got a very low market price. That's the, due to its uh, blackish color. Uh, pink color, blue color, that are the main demanding. So it is shallow water tuna, that's called euthinous affinis, shallow water tuna, that's available. And we have got about uh, three, a few hundred very commercial. But the government has taken a, a, a many newly uh, designed uh, tuna project, currently implementing through the uh, in Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, that will explore the other details. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Next, please. Uh, I believe uh, all of our uh, member staffs of Bimbrad, they have participated in the discussion. Uh, I believe from our side, uh, that's it. Uh, do you have any uh, points before? Yes. I've, got, I've got a very quick question uh, that uh, what is the activities going on in regard to coastal fishing communities livelihood development through your program? Uh, 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 okay, the, as far as uh, Bimbrad is concerned, uh, uh, the, uh, you have seen we have just started is very uh, newly um, established institution. Uh, we did carry out a uh, seminar in Khulna area in cooperation with the uh, Navy, Naval Base uh, in Khulna, where we invited all the coastal communities, uh, including journalists, marginal people, and um, uh, those who are uh, involved with the fishing, Sundarbon areas. It's a variety of people, they have participated. Yeah. We did in, in, in Bangla and there we got some recommendations and um, uh, from there we already in uh, uh, contact uh, with the, the Khulna University uh, professors and uh, we are also trying to do some uh, project with them how to bring about the how to work uh, or involve Bimbrad with the livelihood of the coastal area, coastal people. So it's, a, uh, it's already in uh, the stage okay. of uh, preparation. Yes, so yes. We have not yet actually involved in the uh, livelihood. So uh, with, uh, with the introduction of your team, uh, Ecofish or Wallfish, uh, uh, the Bimrad will have possibly the good. opportunity to uh, work, start work uh, for, for, the, for, the, for the improvement of livelihood of the coastal people. Please note uh, that we, we did not work in the Khulna areas. Sorry for that. We did yeah. not work in the Khulna areas. We started from the Boruguna, Boruguna, Piraspur, Jhaluka, Tipotua Khali up to Cox Bazar. This is the region where Ecofish worked. So I'm very happy that you have taken care of areas where we did not address. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wahab. Very sir, good. Can I ask one question, a small question, sir? Just I'm curious. It's about the rear admiral Khurshid Alam, sir. 
who is I think who is leading the maritime affairs division of the foreign affairs. Do you have any linkage with with him or his? Uh, 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 Red Mel Khushid Alam is the founder member of Bimrad. If you go uh -huh. to the website, uh, website. Yes, I have seen that. Yeah, yeah, you will see his name. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we try to uh, uh, wind it down to today's uh, Please. discussion uh, uh, with the permission of Dr. Ohab. Uh, possibly we have... If Chris is still uh, there, if Chris is still there, I believe that Chris will have something to say when uh, you conclude. Though uh, from our side, Chris will uh, speak and your I, side also. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he is here. Okay. Uh, I think we have lost him. No problem. I will, I will request you to uh, convey uh, the outcome of our meeting. Excellent. Uh, I'll do. So, uh, before I uh, uh, request our chairman, I will have some uh, uh, the points or recommendation from myself, and then we will try to recommend have some recommendation from the uh, Bimrad level at the higher level. Yes, so the I discussion our team was very record. lively. Thank you very much, Doctor. The, the discussion was very lively. And I do not want to go to in tidbits or nitty gritty, but the overall idea is that yes, there are some areas of very good areas of cooperation for both institution, Bimrad as well as Warfish. So, uh, uh, and uh, if you have, uh, if you, uh, Bimrad is uh, in connection with Warfish, uh, then uh, the both institutions will be benefited, what I understand, and you will get more support from Navy, Coast Guard, and naval activities like uh, safety and security, their survey, survey ship, uh, and all these, and also in the, uh, our Dr. Jalil and Hedayatullah mentioned about the mangrove, uh, the ecosystem in the Sundarbon area. So uh, there are some good area of cooperation. And the another one, uh, there is a question came up, the MSP. So MSP and MPA, uh, as I mentioned before, that the uh, China was also interested. So, so the China, uh, Bimgard, Wallfish, they all, we can all work together for uh, MSP as well. And uh, uh, lots of discussion uh, uh, actually generated and most of them actually, I didn't know. I didn't have such idea. And I believe uh, most of our officers, um, uh, the resource officers, those who are here, uh, they also did not have that idea. But after your discussion and deliberation of the uh, uh, deliberation, we are now much more educated than before uh, as far as, uh, uh, fishing, coastal livelihoods are concerned. So uh, I will, um, so we need to generate education amongst the, uh, uh, amongst the, especially young people, young population. So what we can do, we can do webinar because the COVID physically, but we can meet um, uh, webinar. Uh, both Wallfish and Vibrat can uh, arrange a webinar where the Navy people, coastal, then marine livelihoods, all other institutes, maritime institutions and uh, university can, uh, can join. And then before that, uh, possibly uh, Vibrat and Wallfish can uh, uh, do some kind of cooperation, which is known as Memorandum of Understanding. We can do memorandum of understanding, and then we can also proceed. And I will also request Dr. Ohab uh, uh, that uh, meanwhile we uh, process all these things, memorandum of understanding or webinar, whatever the case, if there is any opportunity or if there is any area where Bimbrat can be associated with the Wallfish to do any research or activities um, uh, at the immediate basis, then we can also discuss on these issues. So that my personal um, uh, thinking. Uh, I will uh, request our uh, chairman uh, to conclude the session. And uh, then we will uh, summarize uh, and we'll have uh, uh, the understanding maybe through emails uh, and then we, we, we proceed. Thank you very much. Uh,
Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I must say that uh, today is a very significant day and uh, it is the day of good start, I think. Uh, I have heard uh, very good things and very encouraging, especially uh, Dr. Oha, we have completed the uh, Ecofish uh, one successfully and I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, probably Ecofish two will be also completed successfully by your dynamic leadership. We have heard a lot of things from your uh, team members. All the team members spoke very well, very well. We are very much encouraged also. Uh, we learned many things, we learned many things. It's very important to uh, mention that, uh, yes, MSP uh, is very important for our country. So uh, I think uh, uh, DZ has rightly pointed out that uh, we can go ahead with MSP uh, together. Uh, encompassing uh, Wallfish, Bimrad, and also uh, Fisheries uh, Ministry uh, and co-related uh, other organizations too. We can start it very well. And I think uh, uh, in Bangladesh, it's a very difficult, uh, you know, for all the organizations to go uh, easily to sea, uh, at sea and uh, the islands, uh, uh, especially the St. Martin Islands uh, and on other Hatia and other islands, you know, it's not it's not easy for any organization to reach there. So I think uh, uh, if uh, you work together with Bimra or any organization works together with Bimra, uh, our ships our ships are at sea uh, as Bimra is uh, patronized by Navy, so the naval ships are always at sea. In 24 hours, you will find four to five ships at sea, a different area. They are always there. So they are spending their time there. So if uh, you have, <clears throat> we have a coordinated plan and any projects like this, we can use the uh, naval ships and they can give the security. They can provide the data also like the hydrographic ships. We have the very best hydrographic ship. As uh, they told, uh, uh, they can give the uh, data also. We can use them. Um, they are moving now, they are protecting the areas and, uh, you know, uh, um, I think the audio and the camera. Hello. Yes, I can hear properly. Uh, electricity has... problem, maybe electricity problem. Uh, no, the chairman uh, has gone free. Yeah, disconnected. Electricity, sir. Uh, Russia, the two ring curva, chairman. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello. 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 I need to pour ecstasy. I need to a virtual meeting with that. I'll come back. So, very many people in relation to carry out any project, see or in coastal areas. And coastal areas are also there. And there is also our naval officer heading the coastal organization. So, we can get all the support from the coastal. So, Navy and coastal, these two big organizations can help us. So I think um, I'm listening with the distorted voice. Rashid, uh, can you, uh, is the same to you? Yeah, uh, we feel it distorted too. Oh, okay. However, I can conclude. I think done. Huh? He has completed. We can work together, and I'm sure that no, no, I have to no, 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 start also discussing yes. Oh, yes, yeah. sir, no problem. Uh, I can, we can uh, 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 understand, but anyway, we can follow up. We can follow up. So I talk together, and I will suggest the uh, issues are also that uh, we can start. Uh, can you can listen to me? Okay. okay, I need to throw the emails and uh, we got DG together and looking forward to have a very good cooperation mm -hmm. with uh, one feed. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much, sir. You are uh, most welcome. Uh, dear Chairman, uh, actually for the last uh, 30 seconds or one minute, we could not uh, hear you. So would you like to... Uh, 
uh, give a brief uh, points what you said on the last one minute. Uh, we yeah, last minute. I, don't know. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, uh, I mentioned that we can go ahead initially beginning with MSP, MSP planning uh, with, uh, you know, World Fish and uh, a ministry, Ministry of Fishing and other organizations who are related to this. And uh, as uh, Bimrad is uh, patronized by Navy, so we can get the help and support from Navy and the Coast Guard very well because our uh, ships are there uh, 24 hours. So many ships. Uh, he has gone again, freeze. Uh, possibly network problem. Yes, yes. Yeah. We have lost him again. Yeah. Um, uh, we got the point. Uh, okay, the Dr. Uhab, uh, I will uh, request you to uh, uh, go ahead with your uh, Thank you very much. Uh, remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I, on behalf of World Fish, sincerely thank you very much, Commodore Mdadul, Kazi Mdadul Haq, and particularly today's gathering where our most honorable chair, Admiral Nizam kindly participated. My colleagues and I highly impressed at your enthusiasm, at your nice presentation, and very thought-provoking questions that was highly appreciated by us, and we enjoyed answering all your questions. To move forward. To move forward. Hello, can you, can you, can you hear me properly? Can you hear me properly? Yeah, can Dr. you hear Oha, me? We can, there are some Dr. noises, Dr. Uh, but uh, we can hear. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Oha, we can hear you, but uh, uh, background noises are coming okay. from some other. Yeah, way. I think I'm uh, taking a computer closer. That may help. Uh, I believe the way we should move ahead, as <laughs> CR said, that MSP may be the priority. I am taking two areas MSP that is under being implemented can be further taken care of by Bimbrad, Walfish, that means Ecofish, IUCN, and we can also invite Chinese relevant institution that you have mentioned to work together and develop a model MSP from Bangladesh side that is liked by not only our government, but that may be liked others as well. And also I emphasize another point that Bangladesh government has declared 65 days marine fishing ban period where Bangladesh Navy is working very hard, adding value to it. Bimrad and Ecofish projects jointly can assist Bangladesh Navy in fuller contribution in, in compliance of the 65 days marine ban because there, is, um, uh, there are some uh, points where we can help in execution of fishing ban that may help in fish production. So with these two things, I'm not the authority. I can only agree with you that we humbly accept your ideas of collaboration, but that should be done from the high ups. And as a Bangladeshi, we are all proud of our naval forces and you are all very brilliant officers. Got retirement after so much better serving the country, dedicated serving the country. You have certain extra ability, character, extra aesthetic values that may add not only research of world fish that can help us in many different ways. And uh, our, our efforts towards the marine biodiversity conservation, marine fisheries development, fishers welfare, 
that can be better solved if we find Imrad and Wallfish together. And Wallfish is very close to your office, to, to your naval place. It's very next, next door, this, uh, just next road. It's so close. Uh, I hope the time will come that we'll visit each other and physically shake hand and have tea together. And to go forward, I would request you to write a letter to Chris explaining or um, just giving emphasis about what happened today and what we are looking forward to. And I would emphasize, let's go for MOU. And I'm a university teacher. In fact, I served agriculture university for 40 years, 35 years active, and then five years I took leave. So with my university collaboration, wherever you collaborate in Bangladesh universities, you will find me, either my students or my colleagues. At Shere Bangla, my student, in Kulla University, my student. So that will give us a better opportunity to collaborate as well. And uh, you do in Kulla, but when you come up to the JDR region where the refugee impact has severely caused trouble and miseries for the host communities, we will extend full cooperation with you. And when the time comes, I would request you to visit our implementing site as well. So with that, I summarize this way the first step, a letter to Chris explaining today's thing, and uh, he has got some, but you can fill in the gap. And then uh, you can sort for cooperation in developing MOU with World Fish, and I request you to make field visit uh, where our activities are going on, particularly in uh, livelihood support to the fishing communities, or I'll provide you some addresses where um, your corps can go and visit, and MSP and implementation of 65 days plan to support Bangladesh government, Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock will be the first chance to collaborate with ongoing activities. So with this, I believe I can see a big picture of future of our collaboration. I dream to see that to be fulfilled. And as a Bangladeshi, I would request Bimbrad to look for the East that we have a potential to collaborate with Indonesia. Indonesia is coming up a very strong maritime country in economic term and marine fisheries management term as well. And their management is getting better. And there is a South-South cooperation program as well. I believe uh, naval forces know better than me. So that is my indication that whether Bimrad can be an additional international collaboration with the Indonesian government and Indonesian similar institution if there is. So with that, I conclude. Thank you, uh, Commodore Kazi M. Dadul Haq. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, uh, Admiral, respectable Chair Admiral Nizam, and our Honorable um, uh, Naval Retired Forces, Scientist and Bimbrad Official. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Haq, for your eloquent uh, speech. Uh, but I have, if I have not um, missed you or what I have understood that we will initiate our uh, letter to Chris, uh, particularly mentioning uh, the uh, MOU and then uh, area of cooperation such as uh, MSP or some other uh, collaboration area. So let's uh, have a, a working understanding and then we can uh, find the area of collaboration. Commander Rashid from uh, our side will uh, start communication with you uh, or you can uh, nominate some other person so that they are in touch. Uh, they will uh, be nominated as a uh, contact, yes. point, contact okay. point. So they will start um, uh, sending uh, emails. Good. So, uh, uh, once again, thank you very much. Uh, as because the chairman came up again, so I will request conclude the uh, uh, session by the chairman, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. No, <laughs> I guess uh, it's okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think uh, uh, some electric problem, electricity or the network problem. It's uh, frozen. Ah, yeah, it's again frozen. Uh, 
I think they, they have seen that he was moving. <laughs> so now again for them. Okay, um, uh, Dr. Wahab, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the, we'll say uh, goodbye to you now. Uh, you can disconnect. Uh, we'll have some small chit chat. Say goodbye to you and to your entire brilliant team. We'll meet again. Thank you. Sometime. Thank you very much, sir. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Goodbye. Thank you.